Dating is an art. And some of y'all don't know how to handle pain. <laughs> so listen. I had to say it. I had to say it. But just, just work with me here. Don't leave the video. Don't get upset. Because I'm here to teach you how to paint a beautiful picture so you can have success in dating and relationships. The reality is that many women go on these dates and, and get into the dating process engaging in behaviors that only turn a man off. And some of y'all have been fed some just misguided, unhealthy information that has you thinking that these things aren't a problem, all right? Or that these little games that some of y'all play, and I know not all of you are playing games, or all of you don't recognize you're playing games, but these behaviors that you engage in create so many problems. So let's, let's get into some of the, the mistakes women make that are turning men off. Well, one of those mistakes is being a tease. <laughs> I had to laugh, but I got a story. I got a couple stories with this one, okay? I had somebody one time who uh, messaged me and she talked about how she goes on this date with this guy. She meets this guy, they exchange number, they were talking, hey, everything's cool, they go on a date. Uh, they have a great date. I think they went out to dinner or whatever. Everything was great. Um, she invites him back to the house for coffee. By the time she invited him back to the house, it's the evening time, okay? So the date was kind of like during the late afternoon and now it's evening. They get back to the house, they have coffee or whatever. Um, they start, you know, sitting down, watch TV, things get close, they start kissing. She's cool with the kissing, okay? She's cool with the kissing. She's, she's kissing him back, <laughs> all right? And then he makes a move on her to push it towards sex. And she loses her freaking mind. She gets so upset, she kicks him out the house, and when she messages me, she's like, why are these men so obsessed with sex? Why does it have to be about sex? You know, I'm done with this guy. And I'm thinking like, why did you do all that if you did not want to have sex? Like, yo, the problem wasn't you not wanting to have sex. I, I didn't get a chance to speak to this man. So I cannot say 100% how he was feeling. But I'm pretty sure the frustration was throwing all these signals and signs that says you're open for business in this way. And then not only was it you said no. Okay, fine. You said no. You, you have every right to say no. You don't want it to go that far. But then you get mad at him. So all that to say, being a tease. Yes, when you, as a woman, you've got to embrace the position that you are taking when it comes to sexual relations in the dating process. All right? If you are waiting, then wait. But don't play the one foot in the door, one foot out the door, because that's confusing as hell. And it's extremely frustrating. And what you have to understand is for a lot of men, it is not perceived as you just going through a genuine conflict of not sure if you want to do it or not. It comes off as you're playing the game of trying to use it as bait, even though you have no intention to allow him to, to take, to, you know, to, to have that. All right. And that is a huge turn off. Again, it is it is it is much more respected. The woman who says this is how I operate. We're not having sex. We're going to have to wait or whatever. Hold her ground. And, and when I say hold your ground, let me be more specific. Don't put yourself and him in situations that make it seem like you're cool with things going in that direction. If that's not the direction you want to go in. None of this is to say that because I don't want anyone to misconstrue this as like, that, well, just because you invite him to the house, that means he can automatically go for sex. No, but you, you got to understand the signal that it sends and that it can confuse people and it can make that guy think like, well, he, he doesn't know what to think at that damn point. But again, that, that frustration will turn into resentment. And, I, and I've seen a lot of situations where God, I even have one in my head where a guy came back to me, he was so upset because he met this woman who was like a high ranking member in the church. They go on a date. They have sex on the first date. And he's a very liberal minded individual. So he's cool with the sex on the first date. He ain't got no problem with it. Right. <laughs> but then by date number two, she's like, oh, well, listen, what happened on date one? That is what it is from here on out. We're not having sex. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. And that pissed them off. And again, 
It's not like he hasn't been on dates with women that he had to wait for a while before they had sex and he didn't have an issue with waiting. It was, why did you even reel me in with this to then take it away? You know what I'm saying? To then say, okay, it's completely off the table. You got to be careful with that. So, yes, uh, <laughs> this is what I had to put out there because there's a lot of women who do engage in this kind of behavior. And some of y'all, I, I understand that for some, it is a genuine conflict within, of uh, well, you feel like you shouldn't be doing it, but there's a party that wants to do it. And I get that. But then there are some of you who are playing a game and you got to be careful. Do not do that. Don't do not. Just don't. Don't be a tease. It's not good at all. And it's definitely a turn off. All right, so let's keep this moving. Enough about sex and teasing. Um, <laughs> number two is focusing on focusing too much on your money and accomplishments. So one of the things I've noticed with a lot of women, especially in today's world, is when I ask them what makes you a good woman, they go on a rant of, well, I have my own car, my own house, my job, my education, my this and this and that. And in no disrespectful intent or with no disrespectful intent, I sometimes say, well, that doesn't matter. Like, who cares? And I don't say that to devalue you or any woman's accomplishments and things that, you know, you have achieved in life. However, you have to understand that that does not win you anything when it comes to dating men. And more specifically, men who either have their stuff together or already ambitious men who are getting their stuff together. They're looking for the other qualities that draw a woman or draw them to a woman. That being loving, supportive, feminine energy, that attraction, all these different things. And so a lot of times when you are focusing too much on accomplishments and money, one, you're, the energy that you're giving off in that exchange is, is more masculine, all right? So that's, and I'll get more into that a little bit later. But that is a problem right there. And again, more specifically, when you are dealing with a masculine man or you desire to be with a masculine man. Also, again, it, it, many women don't realize how in doing that, sometimes some exude a level of arrogance, all right? They're, they're using these accomplishments as validation of self. And in that, they use it as a way to feel confident and good about themselves, but they, they don't realize they cross that line of arrogance. And so that can be very off-putting, all right? As well as sometimes this, this boasting of what you have conveys a person who wants to be in control, who's going to try to run the show, all right? And who may also minimize what that man has going on. Because there are some men who are just insecure on their own, right? But there are women who, just as a man can engage in behaviors and say things that can make a woman feel more insecure in his presence, well, the same thing can happen in reverse. Now, granted, it doesn't mean that men or women should not learn how to be confident within themselves, that no one can make them feel this way, but it happens. It happens. And so when you're just so focused on that, you, again, you throw things off in so many ways. And yes, you be, it becomes a turnoff. Now, let me make something clear. Turning off, at least in the context that I'm talking about, does not mean he won't want to sleep with you. So don't confuse the man who continues to date you for the purpose of sleeping with you as a means to say, well, it didn't work against me. No, it did because he may have slept with you, but he does not want to take you serious anymore. So it's turning him off as far as wanting any uh, serious, committed relationship with you, being, uh, you know, genuinely involved in, in trying to build something great with you as far as a relationship is concerned. So you got to be mindful of that and, and focus more on who you are as a person. All right. Again, loving, kind, communicative, what you like to do, all these things that convey that energy that he's looking for in a woman, all that accomplishment stuff, that can be icing on the cake, all right? But if that's what you're hanging your hat on, that's going to typically turn into a problem for you. All right, so now let's move on to the third uh, dating mistake that turned men off is playing hard to get, all right? Now, I know some of you are thinking, oh, hell no, men, men love to chase and love to hunt and, and all this stuff that y'all have been led to believe. And I'm here to tell you it's a bunch of nonsense, all right? 
When we talk about men are hunters and they like to chase, you have to understand that's more in the competitive sense. And that is not tied to something that they're emotionally invested in. Once you add the emotional component, so what I'm saying here, once this man actually likes you, once this man actually has genuine serious interest, the, uh, the chasing you, the you playing hard to get, is only going to be a turn off or shoot you in the foot, all right? And so to, 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 to help you understand that even better, again, when, when, you, when there is not an emotional investment here, a genuine emotional investment, you're like a video game. And the, 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 the goal is to conquer the game, is to beat the game. You are a conquest. And once that is accomplished, you know what men do once they beat the game? They throw it away and go find a new game to play. And that's what happens to a lot of women who, who engage in this. They, they, they go into this back and forth, play hard to get. All right, he does all that. He gets you, and then once he gets you, he discards you. Or once he gets you, now, again, he stops putting forth the effort and expects you to put the, forth the effort for him to be servant to him damn near while he doesn't have to do anything anymore because he worked so hard in the beginning to get you. So it does not work out well even if he proceeds with the chase. But again, when the man is genuinely interested, he has genuine feelings, you playing hard to get can cause him to feel insecure in the sense that, well, okay, maybe she doesn't like me like that. She's not as serious about me. Uh, maybe my efforts are not truly working. All right. I don't feel desired and appreciated here. There's so much that now starts to plant negative seeds and starts to push the man away rather than reel him in. And a lot of times something that's coming to my mind, sometimes you'll see these situations where the man has the one woman who let's just say is the good girl, right? But the good girl is kind of playing hard to get. And then he's dealing with this other girl who's kind of the crazy girl, right? Who she don't play hard to get. That girl showing up at his doorstep, she's doing everything to show that man that she wants him. Now, even though the, the quote-unquote good girl may be a better overall woman as far as quality of woman, many times you will see the man choose the crazy girl. Why? Because she acts like or at least shows the man that she wants him. That desire... That feeling that I'm, I'm appreciated here reels him in more than simply being a, a girl with some great qualities that you think, well, he should be chasing you. It doesn't work that way. So again, when we're talking about serious relationships, that playing hard to get, you got to stop that because that is a huge turn off for serious relationship minded men um, in the dating process. So that brings me to number four. Four. And real quick, be sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video because I appreciate your support. Number four, having an entitled mindset and not being appreciative. All right. So I'm a firm believer in men protecting and providing men doing for women. If you're serious about her, there's nothing wrong with you taking care of things, all this kind of stuff. Right. But what I will not do is co-sign a man pouring into a woman who is not willing to show him appreciation, who is, who is feeling like she's entitled to this stuff. That entitlement mindset is a huge turnoff to men. And I have to stress this to men who know their value even more specifically. The man who does not know his value, the man who is lacking confidence and self-worth, he may entertain, engage, and tolerate this lack of respect, to be quite honest with you, and, and this unwillingness to show appreciation and, and this mindset of, well, you're supposed to do this and, and all this kind of stuff, right? But the guy of value, he ain't tolerating that. And again, not only is he not tolerating it, he is utterly turned off by it. And I'll give you an example using myself. I can be a very generous person, but if you have a, an entitled mindset, I won't give your behind a damn dollar. Okay, like, yo, I, I will empty out my pockets for people. But if you come at me like I'm supposed to do this and you don't show appreciation and understand that I am choosing to do something nice for you, and I don't care who you are, man, woman, stranger, lover, whatever. If you have an entitled mindset, 
You will kill my desire. And the only thing that's going to save you is God and Jesus telling me, I got to do it right now, okay? That's the only thing that's going to save you in that moment. But outside of that, I'm done. I'm not dealing with you. Again, it is very off-putting. And so a lot of women, maybe you may not be you, are coming into this dating process being very entitled. You've been told you are a queen. Hell, I've told you you're a queen. And I'm not saying you're not a queen. But what I, what I am saying is don't let that queen stuff go to your head to where you think men are supposed to serve you and do this and do that and do that to where, again, you don't acknowledge the effort the way it needs to be acknowledged. You don't show appreciation. You don't reciprocate the effort. You, you got to make sure you're doing your part too or else you're going to kill his desire to keep pouring into you and you are going to kill the potential of that uh, relationship and situation. So... Yeah, kill, uh, eliminate the whole entitlement thing and learn how to be appreciative in life, not just in dating, in life in general. All right, so now before I move on to number five, real quick, get your copy of How to Get a Man to Cherish You. Don't let the title trigger you, all right? I know some of y'all are like, where the hell I got to get a man to do anything? No, listen, trust me. Trust me. You're going to love it. doesn't matter if you're single, married, whatever your situation is. You are going to love and value the information I'm providing for you in this book. The women who've read it will tell you the exact same thing. So be sure, click the link in the description or the comment section, get your copy, and start to enjoy the benefits of using that information I give you, all right? So now number five, and that is holding him to standards you won't hold yourself to, all right? So this one thing that jumps in my mind right away <laughs> that I feel the need to, to mention, all right, is the standard of communication. I cannot tell you how often I've seen women complain about men not being completely forthcoming and honest when your ass is lying too. <laughs> all right? I'm sorry. I had to say it like that. Like, yo, you over here, you're holding back, you're omitting truths. And you're complaining about what he's doing. You are not holding yourself to the standard you hold him to. Now, listen, he should not be lying. He should not be omitting truth. I want both parties to be open. But you got to start noticing or start being aware of not being a hypocrite. Because some men are aware enough to start picking up on the fact that, well, wait a minute, you, you did this, but you're mad at me for the same thing. Another perfect example is uh, in regard to communication. I'll see women say, oh my gosh, I haven't heard from him for the last five days and you're pissed off and now you're going to cut him off. And I'm like, well, did you call him in the last five days? So, so only he's responsible for not reaching out in those five days, but you did the same exact thing as him. Like that, that's not reasonable. And again, if you're going to be mad at him for that and hold him to that standard, then you've got to be willing to, to embrace your own accountability in the situation as well. And this continues on in any, any aspect of this. If we're going to be mad at him for not showing enough effort, are you showing enough effort? If we're going to be mad at him for not complimenting you, do you compliment him? You know what I'm saying? And, 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 it, and it's not always going to be about doing the exact same actions, but to make it even simpler or more a better way to go about it is, if you want him to tap into your love language, are you tapping into his? Are you understanding his needs the way that you want him to understand your needs? All right. And so whatever that is, communication, spending quality time, all these things, we need to talk about it. And we need to, again, make sure that you are doing the same because too many women are taking an approach that says, you as the man have to do the work and I get to sit back and evaluate if you're good enough. And that's not a winning recipe for a lot of women, for most women. Some women have managed to get by with that. But what are they setting themselves up for? All right. Don't don't assume because a woman who and, and naming some of the other things I've already mentioned on this list, a woman who's entitled, a, 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 a woman who's a tease, whatever. Right. Don't say, well, I've seen that woman get a man. So how is this wrong? Well, number one, would you even get with the kind of man she got with? Like, that's a funny one I've noticed where 
<laughs> Women will say, well, she got a man, but you wouldn't want that same man. If that same man came to you, you'd be like, hell no. So why are we acting like she won something? Like she actually did good here. And even if it's okay, she got a man. Well, what about the quality of the relationship she set herself up for? If these things are still not desirable, her simply having a man does not mean she is successful in the dating process. So do not validate certain behaviors and, 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 and approaches because you see someone else get a certain result, but it's not quality. All right. So again, the original point is you got to be willing to be fair in, in how you hold him accountable and holding yourself accountable as well. And again, making sure it's a mutual effort that we're putting forth in building this relationship. All right. So now here is number six, six, uh, turn off dating mistake that turns men off. And let me just say, I'm, I'm only mentioning this because <laughs> it, it comes up a lot. So I have to put this on the list. Wearing too much makeup. All right. Now I want to stress the words too much because listen, I get it. A lot of women love makeup. Um, and a lot of women will say, well, they don't wear makeup for men. They wear it for themselves. I'm not even going to argue that right now. Fine. Cool. Right. And I, and I think that for most men, makeup in general is not really a problem. All right. Though, yes, if, if there's an over-reliance on it, it can for some men be, but not for everybody. And, and hell, there are some men out there who not, they want their woman to wear more makeup. Like I, I was speaking to a, a woman a few months ago where she said her man's complaint was she needs to dress up around the house and throw on some makeup. So some people have their preferences. But the point that I'm making here that seems to be a little bit more universally in universally embraced is the action of wearing too much makeup. Now, in fairness, you know, I guess what people will consider too much can vary, but in today's world, makeup has gotten heavier and heavier <laughs> with his faces. And for some men, for a lot of men, that can be a turnoff. All right. Especially, especially when the makeup is not enhancing your look, it's transforming it, all right? Meaning, when that makeup comes off, you are a completely different person, okay? Now, and, and listen, there are some women that when the makeup come off, they're even better looking. Like, it's crazy. I, I see some women, and I'm just wondering, like, why do they wear that much makeup when they're so much prettier without it? Um, and then there's other situations, if we're being honest, where the person ain't as cute with the makeup off, right? Whatever it is, it's the, it's the deception of it. It's the deception of it. It's the, it's also the inconvenience that the too much makeup can have as far as like, well, hell, we can barely hug each other because if you lay your head on my chest, my whole shirt is now colored. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like all these different things that come from wearing too much makeup. Now, listen, at the end of the day, this is one of those, this is one of the things that you have to make your own decision on. All right. It kind of goes like when I say being yourself, if who you are is a woman that loves you some damn makeup, loves throwing heavy layers of it, then I don't want you to stop just for the sake of men because then you won't be happy. You know what I'm saying? So you got to find your happy place when it comes to stuff like this and how you present yourself to the world. But I did feel the need to add it to the list of turn offs because it is a complaint that a lot of men today have. And again, I stress, it's not simply wearing the makeup, it's the amount of it. And I do think that it would be good for some women to at least learn how to apply a lighter level of makeup so they can still have their fun with it and enjoy wearing makeup, but it's not just so overly used. But again, that's a personal decision for you to make. Now we're at number seven, and number seven is being too hard. And we can even say being too masculine. All right. But when I say being too hard, I, I really want to focus more so on being so closed off. All right. A lot of you are dating with walls up and I understand you've been through some things and it may be hard to be vulnerable, but you have to understand that if someone is seeking or interested in a serious relationship with you, 
they're seeking love. They're seeking the ability to connect with somebody. They're, they're seeking something deeper. And when you are so walled up and hardened, then you become, you, you, you are no longer a viable candidate to have a serious relationship with. At least that's the, that, that becomes the perception, all right? You may behind that wall be the most loving, feminine, sweet woman, but you're, you're blinding their ability to see that because of the layers you have on top. And you can't have this mentality of, well, if they care enough or they want me enough, they, they should be willing to peel back those layers. I always use the analogy, it's almost like if, if you as a woman value financial stability and a man walks around looking like he's literally homeless and he says, well, you know, a woman should be willing to get to know me to peel back the layers to realize I'm actually not homeless, I do have money. You ain't got time for that. <laughs> like if you, you're going to walk around looking like a homeless man, well, of course people are going to assume that you are not financially stable as a man. So if you're going to walk around being all hardened and cold and walled up, why would he have to assume or even think, I, I want to give my time to trying to figure out if this woman is actually more loving and feminine behind all that. And you got to understand, this is especially true as we become grown adults. We got plenty of things going on in our lives. We don't have time to have to dig, 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 and we're never guaranteed. So while you're saying, well, if he cared, he will peel back my layers and learn me. But you got to understand if he, if he has that approach with dating women and now the next 10 women he dates all are hardened with walls up and he is expected to peel back the layers of each of these women. Well, guess what? He may spend months, however long, years in some situations, peeling back layers only to find out that at the core, it's still not working with this woman. Now he got to go to the next one, do the same thing over again and the same thing. That's just not reasonable. All right. We've got to come into dating and relationships with a willingness to be open and vulnerable. And if we can't, that means we're not ready. We need to heal. We have things we need to work on. But you got to understand that, yes, coming off too cold, coming off too hardened, too, too many walls up is going to be a turnoff. But I feel the need to highlight one more time. It will turn him off as far as taking you seriously. But that doesn't mean it will turn him off as far as him wanting to sleep with you. And, and this is what happens to so many women. That guy will continue to talk to you because he wants to sleep with you, but he is not going to entertain being with you in a real relationship. And if you want a real relationship, then you've got to address this issue. So now we got two more to go. Here is number eight, the eighth turnoff or eighth dating mistake that turns men off. Making it all about God. Now listen, <laughs> because if you watch my videos, you know I make a, I make a lot of things about God, all right? And, and, and in no way am I telling you that God should not be involved in your dating process if you are a believer, because he, 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 he's going to be involved in mine, I'll tell you that much. But here's what I mean. The key word here is all, making it all about God. And what I'm saying to you is this. I once had a client, I remember one time, where she had this guy that she really liked. And they were actually both in the church. They were involved in the church. And every time she engaged with him, it was talking about God and scripture and all these things, right? That's all she focused on. And, and part of her thought, that's what she, she should do because he's a man of God. And, and I think he was even working towards being in a certain leadership position in the church or whatever. So he was very uh, committed to the church. So she thought maybe that was the angle she's supposed to take. And nothing would progress with this guy. It's like, yeah, they would have their conversation, but it wouldn't go anywhere. And she's a very good looking woman. So it was like, okay, why is he not having interest? At least that's what she was wondering. And when she spoke to me about it, I said, well, listen, he needs to know who you are. Like he knows that you have God in your life. And that's great. And again, we don't, we don't deny that. We don't run from that. And we don't, we don't, we don't show that there's, there's nothing wrong with showing that that's a priority in your life, but you are not allowing the man to see you and who you are outside of that, beyond that. Because listen, if I'm in a relationship with you, if 24 seven, this is about church, God and scripture, 
it's going to, it's going to, it's going to just, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Like, I don't know if any of you have ever been with an overly religious person. That is, it's frustrating. It can be very stressful. It can be very annoying. We want a balanced life. We want God, but we want to have fun. And when I say fun, good fun and all that kind of stuff, nothing, you know, crazy or whatever, but we, we, we want to be able to enjoy each other on different levels. And sometimes as a woman, and I have to say this, you're, you're hiding behind God and you're using that shield as a method of protection. And again, you're not allowing yourself to be vulnerable and show who you are. And so that man doesn't get to connect with you and, and all that overly religious on the surface, it becomes overbearing. It, 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 it just, it's too much. It's too much. So when I say making it all about God, I simply mean being overly religious in the dating process. I mean, again, not allowing you two to get to know each other outside of church and spirituality. Again, that will play a role that will be important. I, I keep stressing that, but you got to bring you to the table. You beyond that. Because you are more than that. You are. You know what I'm saying? God made you more than that. So there's no reason to, to hide that unless you are lacking confidence in the other aspects of who you are. And I say unless, meaning that that's an issue that we have to then address and correct. Because again, it goes back to now you're, you're using the God and the religion as a defense mechanism. And, and people can sense that. You know what I'm saying? And so, and also, let me say this. I, I feel the need to say this. When you come off overly religious, right? We have to understand that we are all human. We're all going to make mistakes. We, we all may have our, even, not all, but many people may have their guilty pleasures, all right? Again, not that they're all just evil people or something like that, but we maybe, you know, they're into some things that may not be looked upon as the most godly, all right? Okay, like in a, in a video I did the other day about um, masculine traits, you can check it out. I talked about being dominant in the bedroom and how some women like to be choked. And, and some people took that as, oh, well, no, that, there's a problem. And I understand their argument, but my point is, yes, some people are into some things that may not be looked upon as godly. The point here is when you're dealing with someone who makes you feel like, Everything is about church, religion, God. You feel like there's no room for being human. There's no room for making a mistake. There's no room for, even if something that you like is something that you need to work past, you don't have that leeway here because they're just so overbearing with, with their religious beliefs. And that can be a huge turnoff. So just be mindful of that. Be who you are. Again, God is a priority, but be mindful of if you're making it all about God in the dating process. And last but not least, and I've kind of touched on it a little bit, but I'll get more specific, is being too damn independent. And I got to use the word damn whenever I talk about independent because it, it is a problem. Now, I'm not going to not going to dwell on this topic too much. I will say that I understand that for a lot of women, being independent wasn't the preferred choice. It was out of necessity, all right? And a lot of women are put in a position right now where they have to depend on themselves and they have to learn how to do things themselves, and I get that. But you cannot lose sight of the fact that to have a great, successful relationship, we have to embrace interdependence. And when you come across too independent when dating, Again, you, you, be, you become less desirable as a partner to a man who's trying to build a serious relationship. You will still be desirable to the man who wants to leech off of you, to the man who wants to put the burden on your back and, and ride your coattails to success. He ain't got no problem with your independence. But to the man who is trying to pour into you, the man who has stuff going on for himself, the man who's about being a leader in a relationship, that guy is going to be very much turned off by you being so damn independent. And again, being too independent for many women is a defense mechanism. There's nothing wrong with you learning or knowing how to handle your own. But when you're not even allowing people to do for you, many times that's a result of, I don't want to have to even rely on anyone else. I don't want to have to seem vulnerable. I don't want to have to have my hopes up. I don't, I don't trust anybody to have my back. That's a problem. That stems from from deeper issues that need to be resolved. And, and so this also turns into the not making them feel needed and valued. 
in, in the relationship. Nobody wants to be in a relationship where they don't feel needed and valued. And when I say needed, I, let's even remove needed. Because I think there, there's some semantics behind the word needed that needs to be dissected. But feel valued and appreciated. Everyone wants to feel valued and appreciated. And when you are too independent, you, you undermine that. You undermine the ability to show a level of appreciation and value of that person. And that is, again, a setup for disaster in most cases and a huge turnoff for so many men. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here. And I'll see you there. A masculine man desires a feminine woman. And the reality is that a lot of you ladies desire a masculine man. Now, some of you might be feeling like, well, there ain't that many going around anymore. <laughs> That's a whole other discussion. But the 